today on Victorious Living. Even the world know that, amen, uh, uh, they can sense, amen, that the Lord is on his way. Hey, church, let's just hold on just for a little while. It's going to happen after a while. Can't you, amen, deep within you, hallelujah, ain't you looking for something to happen? Things is not always going to be as it is now. There's a real change going to come. Hallelujah. This thing ain't gonna be over after a while. Amen, it's in the atmosphere. Just hold on. Don't get attached to this world. This is Victorious Living from the Ministries of Greater Bethlehem Temple Church based in Jackson, Mississippi, comes this edition of Victorious Living with Pastor Robert Fortson. We're talking about our connection to God, our love for God, and our appreciation for God. I want you to know that whenever you get attached to God, you keep that attachment. Don't let nothing, amen, uh, detach you from God. Our subject tonight, let not your attachment be to this world. Amen. Let not your attachment be to this world. Amen. I, um, I was thinking, well, anticipating, Tonight, uh, a lesson, and um, I will just uh, ponder in it just a little bit before I came in. And I, and I just thought, I said, it's so important for you, for us to recognize who we are connected to. Amen. It's so important for us to recognize our real attachment. And if we know that we are associated or we are connected to Jesus, then always remember this, that you cannot have a better attachment. The world, let me, let me tell you this. Uh, all the way from the beginning to the ending, I know Jesus is, is in the center, but yet he exists uh, uh, in the completeness of it from the beginning to the ending. But people of Old Testament was attached to Jesus because of the promise. And people, amen, that's in the New Testament is uh, attached to him because they saw the promise, amen, uh, uh, crucified. So people always had an attachment to Jesus. Amen. Back then he was Christ. Understand Jesus was born, but Christ always existed. Hallelujah. Now... He's not going to let us down. You know, there's no if and end whether we're going to win. We're winners. He's already won. He's sitting in the end, hallelujah, waiting for us to be crowned. And I want to say to everybody that actually here in this lesson tonight, let not your attachment be to the world. I, I, I want to go to a couple of examples of people that had an attachment uh, to God and they wouldn't let it go. I want to go to the book of Hebrew, the 11th chapter, and I want to start with verse 24. By faith. The devil going to try you. I want you all to understand this. The devil going to try you. Brothers and sisters, we're on our way, but we haven't made it yet. God don't want to see not a one of us fail, but the devil want to see us all to become failures. Hallelujah. 
He is very faithful when it comes to doing his job. He observes every twist and turn that you take. And any time, at any junction of your life, you suggest that there's a possibility he could get you off of your game. He's going to be there to provide all the assistance that you need in order to get you. Hallelujah. And that's why, amen, uh, uh, Peter was known as one of those repetitious uh, apostles or a preacher that always will remind people that you got to keep holding on. Hallelujah. And that's what we do, you all. We just keep reminding people to hold on. I, you know, I, I don't know about you, but I hate to see failure. I hate to see people that have been standing, amen, amen, to drop off. And, and I know people, amen, they never actually send you a memo and say, I'm fixing to drop off. But you just, their action tell you, amen, that uh, something is going on. And if you don't watch it, hallelujah, amen, uh, they're going to get off the train. And, and, and when you do things in the ways of God and like God say, I, I want you to know it is obvious and people can tell. And, and God is not a, a person, amen, that go around doing things strangely when it come actually to his people. He tell us what he want us to do. He keep us together. He keep us focused, amen. And he's striving to make us one and to be together. Hallelujah. And he's not trying to divide us and separate us. He's not trying to do us in. That's, you know, God is not operating in that way. But now notice in this passage of scripture here, amen, uh, Egypt was actually uh, the place where the people of God was dwelling. Hey, you all, God always got representation in the earth. There's not a time that he's not without a witness. Hallelujah. And wherever his representation is, amen, I, I want you to know it's going to be some problems. It's going to be some problems. Wherever his representation is, there was a time uh, when the prophet uh, 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 thought uh, that he was the only one left. But God had to let him know, amen, I got 7,000 that haven't even bowed to Baal. Hallelujah. You're not my only representative. Amen. Hallelujah. You're not the only prophet. I got 7,000 that haven't even bowed to Baal. We don't know everybody, but God got great representation. But in this passage of scripture, when they was in Egypt, and I want you to know that uh, when the enemy get ready to actually do damage, he actually go to the person that uh, is in the ideal position to do the most for God. He always liked to bind the strong man. Moses was born with an assignment. He was kept and preserved by God in order to fulfill God's will. When he was born, amen, it was a dangerous time for a male child, amen, in, in, in the land of Egypt. Because it had every uh, male child that was born a woman had already been summoned to die. But here Moses is, hallelujah, born in a time when he was supposed to be summoned unto death, was 40 years old. And he was the only, amen, Israelite that was 40 years old that same, that same year that was a male. Simply because, amen, he was... The one that God kept alive because God had something to do with him. What I like about it, you all, when God got something for you to do, can't nobody destroy you. Hallelujah. When God got somewhere to take you, amen, can't nobody keep you from getting there. I want you, hallelujah, to know that when God is the author of who we are and, who, and where we're going, you don't have to worry about somebody else interfering and stopping it from happening. You can always have complete confidence in God. But when he got 40, amen, years old, amen, he made a choice. Even though, hallelujah, he had lived as a prince in Egypt, amen, for 40 years. When he got 40 years old, he made a choice. 
He made a choice, hallelujah, that even though I'm living in the king's palace, even though, amen, I'm, I, I, I'm considered, amen, in Pharaoh's house, his daughter, amen, is considered my mother, but he made a conscious decision, hallelujah, this is not me, this is not what I want to be, hallelujah, this is not who I am. And my true identity is going to be made known. Even though I have enjoyed this royalty for 40 years, but I never attach myself to it. Right. Hallelujah. It's amazing, you all, that sometimes God can bless us with things, and we allow those things that God bless us with, amen, to have an attachment to us. But don't attach yourself to this world. Hallelujah. Deception is behind it. Read. By faith. By faith. Now, faith is believing what God has done and what God's going to do and what God has said. Faith works backwards now and in the future. So, in order, amen, for us to see this, we have to see it by faith. By faith, Moses. When he was come to years. When he had gotten to be a grown man. Refused to be called the son of Pharaoh. He daughter. refused to be called Pharaoh's daughter. I'm sorry, I'm not an Egyptian. I'm sorry, if, amen, Pharaoh's daughter is not my mama. I am sorry, you all, hallelujah, amen. Even though they are considered slaves, but I'm one of them. Is anybody, amen, is ashamed to be one of them today? That's a song that talk about I'm one of them today. Hallelujah. It's talking about I'm one of those uh, 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 people that are suffering reproaches in the earth. So the Bible said, look, at 40 years old, he refused to be called Pharaoh's daughter. Read. Choosing rather to suffer affliction. He chose. God. I'll take the way of suffering. Hallelujah. I will take the way of affliction. I will take the way, hallelujah, amen, of the, I take the difficult paths with the peoples of God. Amen. Stay with the peoples of God, you all. Stay with the, people, the peoples of God. Don't ever attach yourself to the world. He said, I will take the way, I, 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 my choice is to stay, amen, with the peoples of God. Then to enjoy the pleasures then of sin. Then to stay in the palace and enjoy the pleasures of sin. For a season. For a season. Hey, y'all, whatever take place down here, it's not but for just a little while. It's a season thing. But we're working toward that which is eternal, you all. I want you to know we're going to get there after a while. You know, I, I, in our Sunday school, there was a culture statement there that let us know that I think it was 2013, a survey was done, and the survey concluded that 73% of males, I think that 18 and above, that the survey was done, believe that the Lord is soon to come. And 54% of the people of that survey, amen, 54% of the black believe that it was coming. Hispanics as well as the white. Even the world know that, amen, uh, I, I, they can sense, amen, that the Lord is on his way. Hey, church, let's just hold on just for a little while. It's going to happen after a while. Can't you, amen, deep within you, hallelujah, ain't you looking for something to happen? Things is not always going to be as it is now. There's a real change going to come. Hallelujah. This thing is going to be over after a while. Amen. It's in the atmosphere. Just hold on. Don't get attached to this world. All right, read. Esteeming the reproach of Christ. Now, he esteemed that the reproach of, of Christ, of the way of serving God. Greater riches. Than brings the about in more Egypt. riches and benefits. Than the treasures in Egypt. Than all the treasures. That is in Egypt. Hallelujah. For Amen. He, it's amazing you all when you are spiritual enough to recognize that whatever the world has to offer you, amen, is not to even be compared with what you have in serving God and God got for you. 
But it's good when you have that knowledge and that understanding whereby, hallelujah, you are hanging there with Jesus even, amen, if you don't just have the pleasure, the joy, the freedom, the pleasantries of life, but you will hang in there because you know having Jesus is more than all of that. Some people can't see the real value of having Jesus, hallelujah, when they don't actually have the stuff and the things and the benefits of this world. But you got to be able to see how wonderful Jesus is, hallelujah, amen, compared to whoever that man is, whoever that woman is. It's a shame, hallelujah, you let somebody to trick you and take you away from God because you see having whatever that may be more valuable than God. What a shame. Some people see pleasure more valuable than God. They see pleasantries of life more valuable than God. The Bible let us know that there was a group, amen, that actually fell, uh, 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 that got choked simply because they couldn't get beyond the attachment of this world. And they didn't make it. And I want you to know those that got choked weren't sinners. It was sanctified folks. You know the seed that actually didn't, never became fruitful because of the thorns and thistles and got choked. If anybody ever, I mean, you know, every now and then my Egypt come out of me. But when them cockabuzz get a hold to the cotton, Hallelujah. And don't let no Johnson grass be with it. That cotton just about wasn't going to make it. And if it did make it, hallelujah, it's an act of Congress to get in there and get it. And sometimes, amen, if it, because of the cucklebug and the Johnson grass, we'll leave that cotton there. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I know y'all don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but somebody know what I'm talking about. It chokes it, Amen. And keep it from being fruitful. It never got into the cotton gin. Hallelujah. And we never was able to enjoy the fruit thereof. I got a few people, amen, in that last generation we talked about this morning. Know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's the same way, you all. The world try to choke you and keep you from becoming fruitful. You're, it's amazing, hallelujah, what you all can become through Jesus. And even the devil know your potential. But what he wants to do, he wants to distract you. Hallelujah. That's why, amen, be careful. Hallelujah. Be careful with your decision that you make. Hallelujah. The devil want to get you off of your game. Off of, he want to take you away from your spiritual success. Don't let it happen. Thank God for his mercy. Hallelujah. Because you're free, you can go on. But what if the devil had been able to keep you? Look what a loss. Hallelujah. Some of you know thoughts, amen, that you've had, things that you've contemplated, and you know it was the wrong move, but God was merciful to you. He didn't let you make that move, and you're still here. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to praise him. Hallelujah. Even though it was pulling for you, amen. And it seemed like this, it, was the, it was the thing that you want to do, but you didn't let it happen. Your attachment to Jesus was greater than that attachment that was pulling for you. Hallelujah. It's important for you to have this attachment to Jesus. You got to see who him, who he is, even though some it is invisible, you can't see it, but you got to believe it. I want you to know, amen, the just don't walk by sight. We don't walk by what we see with the eye. We walk by what we believe in the heart. We got to believe him every step of the way. We can't be attached to this world. Hallelujah. God will see us through. I want y'all to know the word, the word would ride us all the way to heaven. All we got to do is just stand on it. Yes. Hallelujah. Love for God will get us through anything life brings. Hallelujah. 
I just got a couple of things I want to cover tonight, and we're going home. But, I, you know, look, you all, we can't be attached to this world. Read. For he had respect <clears throat> unto the recompense of the reward. He had respect unto the recompense of reward. In other words, hallelujah, amen. His attachment was not to Egypt, but it was to what he had been taught and told. Hallelujah. Hey, I'm so glad that when Moses was in Egypt as a slave boy, he knew who he was. Hallelujah. He knew who he was. He knew if he just hold on what his recompense was going to be. He knew what he going to receive if he just hold on. He knew what he was going to accomplish. He knew, hallelujah, amen, that great success waited for him. The reason some people fought out because they can only see in the now. But God wants us to look beyond that. We got to believe him to what he has said. Hallelujah. Look, I don't care what your situation is now. Just hold to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. What's, what it is now, it's not what it's going to be after a while. Amen. Hallelujah. What you see me being now is just temporary. Hallelujah. After a while, we're going to all be on the same playing ground. We're all going to be equal. We all going to have angels' wings. I can't walk now, but I'm going to have my wings after a while. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So don't, see your, don't worry about your situation now. There's a recompense of reward waiting for you. Just hang in there. Hallelujah. Amen. Just hang in there. And watch and see what God will do. All right? Read one more verse for me. By faith, By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. He actually, amen, was able to get out of Egypt. And even though the king was mad, was after him and wanted to destroy him, amen, he had no fear. And read. For he endured. He endured. As seeing him who is invisible. He had his eyes on God. Who, even though he didn't see him, he was invisible, but he believed him. I, I want to go to, I want to go up just a little bit, you all. Look, I, I am, I'm borrowing from some of the heroes of faith to kind of show you that you don't have to attach to this world. And God would actually bring you through. Let, let's move up to verse 17. I like this verse here. Hallelujah. By faith. By faith. Abraham. All right. He was tried. I, I, I like uh, Abraham. You know, the Bible said he was the friend of God. Now, Abraham was tried. But I like God because he gives us experience. He teaches us things. And those teaching, amen, is to become uh, 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 information to us that help get us through and help us to excel and help us to endure the other tests and trials that life brings us. Now, take a look here. The Bible said when Abraham was tried, and that's when he was tried with Isaac, you know, God said, look, you take your only son, the son of promise, and I want you to go to the country of Moriah, and I want you to offer him as a sacrifice. And when they got ready to go up in the mountain, uh, uh, Isaac, amen, was a little boy, and he was able to talk, and he was carrying the wood. And, and uh, he, he, said, he said, hey, Daddy, I know we're going to make a bunch of sacrifice here. He said, and, and um, you know, we've done this before, so I know what's needed. <laughs> And uh, we, we got the wood here, and <laughs> we got the fire here, but hey amen. Uh, well, where, where's the sacrifice? <laughs> Abraham said to his son, God will provide himself a sacrifice. And you know, the, 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 the scripture don't tell us all this stuff, but when he got up there, hallelujah, he took eyes and he said, well, come on, son. All right, Dad, what's going on here? He bind him, put him on the altar, 
and got ready to slay him. Hallelujah. But this scripture tells us what was in Abraham's mind. I said this scripture tells us what was in Abraham's mind. Go back to Hebrew. By faith, Abraham. By faith, Abraham. All right. When he was tried. When God tried him. Offered up Isaac. He offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. He that had received the promise offered up his own offer up his own begotten son. Now this was in his mind. Read. C -c come here, son. Of, come of here, come whom, here. Of whom it was said of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. In Isaac shall thy seed be called. Now Abraham knew that Isaac had to bear son. Because God had said it. Amen. I want you to know when you got God's word, hallelujah, do whatever God say do because God never, hallelujah, nothing he speak would ever drop to the ground. But Abraham, this is what he had in his mind. He had in his mind what? Of whom it was said. Whom it was said. That in Isaac shall thy seed be called. All right. Accounting that God was able to raise him up. You know what? Abraham said, look, Isaac got here out of a dead situation. And if he dead again, God can bring him back. Now, some of y'all didn't get that, did you? Some of y'all didn't get that. Isaac was born out of a dead situation when Sarah was good as dead. And when Abraham was dead... In other words, when they were humanly impossible, able to get a child, Abraham said, look, he came here out of a dead situation. And if, I, if, and if he dead again, God can bring him back. God give us things that we can hold on to. Hallelujah. Ain't that what the scripture said? Well, read it again. No, somebody didn't get it. Accounting that God was able to raise him up. He accounted that God was able to raise him up. Even from the dead. Even from the dead. From whence also he received him in a figure. In a figure he received him from a dead situation. For example, I don't see uh, anybody in here that just totally and absolutely passed their childbearing years. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Thank you for joining us. If you'd like a copy of today's message, need prayer, or have questions about receiving Christ in your life, give us a call at 601 354 2599 or visit our website at gbtchurch.org. Victorious Living with Pastor Robert Forson is brought to you by the Ministries of Greater Bethlehem Temple Church, Jackson, Mississippi.